We are here in the historic Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum, 90,000 seat stadium. Not quite filled that all the way to this game between Rutgers and Tulsa. The very last NIT game for the first round of, for the first ever Christmas Bowl. And winner of this one will go on to meet top seeded Georgia Tech in the Cure Bowl in the second round. And for Georgia Tech, they picked up a victory. The first game, actually, of the BCS playoff season. That was Friday, or Thursday, at 1. This game is Sunday at 8. So Georgia Tech has been patiently waiting for about two days to find out who their opponent is going to be. And, well, they are just now moments away from finding out as Tulsa and Rutgers get set to do battle. Should be a fun and interesting matchup here in the LA Coliseum. The very first ever Christmas Bowl is a proposed bowl several years ago and uh, original bowl committee and so it didn't really like it and they said nope. But uh, we're doing it here. And you're taking a look at one of the top players on the Tulsa Gold Golden Hurricane. The linebacker, senior linebacker out of Dallas, Texas. For Tulsa, you got to keep your eye on them and their starting quarterback, G.J. Kenny. They had a really good story about him on the, down the uh, the ESPN 30 for 30, was it 30 for 30 special or or ESPN 60 or E60 or whatever. One of those numbered shows. It was a story about G.J. Kenny and his father. Just a really cool story. They did a really nice job on it. So if you can, you know, YouTube it or or something. GJ Kenny's story is is really something to watch. Really interesting. And he is a phenomenal quarterback. Is Kenny? He's been leading this Tulsa Golden Hurricane team for the last couple of years. He's a senior now, and he's wanting to go out strong on his senior year. What better way than to lead your team not only to a bowl win here? But also, you know, an IT championship. You see how good Kenny is. The pressure came. He got rid of it. Didn't complete it. But the important thing was pressure came and he didn't take the sack. He just like, shoot, let's get rid of it. Long travels for both Rutgers and Tulsa to make it here. And, but that's what happens when you're the fourth and fifth seed. You get those, those bottom bowl games that are far away from your home. That's going to be a first down for Tulsa and they move the chains. The winner of this game will have to go all the way to Orlando for their next game. Kenny on the screen pass completes it, and that's going to be a first down for Tulsa. That was into the hands of number 22, Trey Watts, the running back. You guys are going for the no huddle. So, and Kenny's going to take off down to the 41. If Tulsa wins the game, I understand they're going to leave tonight and they're going to head back home to Oklahoma, meet halfway, head home to Oklahoma for about a day or two, and then after that they're going to regroup and head down to Orlando for the Cure Bowl. And also I know that for the Cure Bowl in Orlando, Kenny throws that one incomplete. They have a lot of really cool bowl festivities set up as they've been doing all week here for the Christmas Bowl. They have a lot of really neat both festivities set up down there in Orlando, especially with all the cancer awareness and all that. A lot of really neat charitable things that they all got set up for the teams. Kenny's going to overthrow his man, just toss that one out of bounds for a four down. So that'll be the travel plan for Tulsa. For Rutgers, they've traveled all the way from New Jersey here to Los Angeles for this game. If they win, I understand they're going to stay here for a night, and then they're going to get into the plane, fly all the way from Orlando here from Los Angeles, and be in Orlando for the week. And should Rutgers then pull off the win in the Cure Bowl, they'll have a couple of days of rest. I understand they're going to take a couple of days off, and then they're going to get on the plane and fly back across the country to Hawaii for the Hawaii Bowl for the NIT Championship. So a lot of traveling to be done here for the Scarlet Knights. But it's all be worth it. I mean, this is a time, a, a month-long kind of trip here incomplete pass that 
you know, this is the time you get to spend with your teammates. For a month, you get to go on a month of vacation. If, you know, you don't want it, then you lose and you're eliminated. You don't get that month of vacation. You keep winning, keep going to new destinations, you get all that cool free stuff. You get to enjoy the bowl experience and Rutgers will be held to a three and out. You get to enjoy the really cool bowl experience, you get free stuff, do a lot of cool things for charity, and see a bunch of cities you've never seen before. And that's why it's so important, even though the travel sometimes, and in some cases, like with Rutgers, it, it would take a toll on you, it's a lot of mileage. It, I mean, it's worth it. You don't want to take that bowl experience away from the student-athletes and, you know, make Rutgers go play at the campus of Tulsa and then go play at the campus of Georgia Tech. And, and that's not much fun for Rutgers, but to be able to go to Los Angeles and be here for a month and have these have, do this cool stuff and then to go to Orlando and do cool festivities for, for a week. I meant on the last statement for a week, and then to go to Hawaii, be there for two weeks. I mean, that, that's really cool, and you don't want to take that bowl experience away from the student athletes, no matter what the travel is. Second down and 14 for Kenny and Tulsa. And after the sack, he decides to, or I should say, the coach rather, decides uh, coach. Uh, well, Greg Pearson, or Greg P Peterson, the uh, offensive coordinator and head coach, Bill Blankenship. They decided let's just keep it safe, drop back, and try to get get the little pass out to the running back. It didn't work out too well, and now Kenny incomplete. And now we're just kind of going back and forth right now as Big East and Conference USA, both teams with like identical records, you know, going at it, dueling, where the winner will go on to battle Georgia Tech. And Georgia Tech, one of those teams that felt slighted, because they got skipped over for a conference champion. It's always been the rules here. Automatic bid for conference champs. But a lot of these teams in this in this NIT have 8-4 and four records. When they got passed up by the bowl committee who voted in Texas and Auburn at 24 and 25. Both with 7-5 and five records. And you saw the performance of Auburn earlier today. A lot of teams have the right to feel better for not being able to get into the BCF playoffs. But... At least they're still getting an opportunity here to do have a really cool bowl experience. And if anything else, another incomplete pass for the Scarlet Knights. If anything else, I'd rather upset, I'd rather see teams number 33, 34, 35 get upset that they didn't get into the playoffs than rather see teams 3, 4, 5, 6 get upset because they're not playing for national championship. Scarlet Knights finally opening things up with that deep pass. Brandon Coleman with the reception and the rest was just done through, done on his feet. Way down and close as any team has come to scoring here so far in the first quarter at the LA Coliseum. And what a treat this is for both of these teams to be able to play in the Coliseum. It's a historic stadium. And I know a lot of players, a lot of athletes, especially in the West here, they grow up wanting to be in this stadium, and this is the stadium that they grew up with, the Coliseum. Sanu, Mohamed Sanu, with the catch. Second down and two now for Rutgers. He's, again, student athletes just enjoying this wonderful bowl experience. The first ever Christmas bowl. End zone incomplete. Rutgers starting quarterback Gary Nova. Him and Chaz Dodd have kind of been going back on the starting job, but for the most part, it's been uh, the freshman Gary Nova who's been taking the helm. And at eight and four, that's not a bad first start, and that's going to be a touchdown for Jamison. So Rutgers on the board first, but. With Dodd being a sophomore and Nova being a freshman, for Rutgers to end up 8-4, and four, that's still pretty good, and that gives plenty of room for improvement, and that, that bars well for the future of this Scarlet Knight team, and maybe we'll see them playing for a national championship in some years to come. The Knights will tack on the extra point. It's up and good, and the, the diehards that made the trip here from New Jersey... To Los Angeles, there's not many of them here today, but to be honest with you, the stadium's about as filled for this game as it would be for a regular bowl game that it would have two 6-6 six and six teams in it or a couple of 7-5 and five teams or what have you like 
we had about 10 or 12 of those in real life. So, you know, they can't all be winners. We can't get them all jam-packed, but I'd say we had about 20 sellouts or about 15 sellouts out of 20 games. That's, that's pretty good and a lot better than any of the bowl games normally you're doing. Into Rutgers territory is Tulsa running back Douglas Jetarian Jetu Douglas for the first down and this time they're they're going to do something a little different they tried to give it to the wide receiver Burham and he lost the yard and they give it back to the back on that play Douglas to get that one yard back that they lost so baby steps I guess Kenny pressured Kenny will go down GJ Kenny will get sacked and the head man that led the Chargers brought down by two guys two big 90s that was Justin Francis number 91 and Scott Ballone number 94 both senior, senior defensive tackles. There's the senior leadership that you like to see. Tulsa, we forced to punt it away on fourth down. And Rutgers will get it back. We saw two NIT games decided by a field goal and then one between Louisville. And Virginia opened up a little bit, but it was still really close. And I think the NIT thus far has really outclassed the BCS playoffs. But we see a deep single coverage pass incomplete. Uh, for the BCS playoffs, that was just the opening round. I can imagine when we get into these later round games, especially some of the matchups we have coming up, we're going to have some close, exciting matchups. Whereas in the NIT, the early round matchups were between a couple of 8 and 4 teams and so evenly matched. On the carry, you saw Jamison go down, and that will take us to the end of the first quarter of the inaugural Christmas Bowl in Los Angeles, California at the L.A. Coliseum. Scarlet Knights 7, Golden Hurricane 0. Welcome back to the Coliseum. These student athletes are having a wonderful bowl experience at the Christmas Bowl. And you're probably wondering, why is it the Christmas Bowl next week? Well, it just got decided on it was going to be a first round playoff game to kind of even out the field across the United States as Rutgers, the pass from Nova, will go out of bounds. And uh, you know what, things, they don't always have to make sense in sports. It's certainly the real college football postseason doesn't. So the Christmas Bowl being a week early certainly doesn't either. Hey, that's just all right by everybody. With that really good punt return by Marco Nelson, Tulsa will get wonderful field position and, quite frankly, field position they need to take advantage of. I think he, uh, the running back, Douglas, got more yards running east-west than he did running north. You got to truck up field sooner than that young man they fake it to Douglas Kenny is looking for the end zone overthrows his man incomplete really waiting for GJ Kenny to get into the zone because I know what a phenomenal quarterback he can be for Tulsa they're trying to do this for the mid-majors they've really been hit hard and run rough shot over in the BCS playoffs so far First down for the Golden Hurricane. I know this is part of the NIT, and actually here in the NIT, Ohio, beating Missouri has been the only mid-major thus far that's picked up a win in a tournament. But we got uh, Southern Miss playing Baylor right now in ESPN2, so it leads to see if Southern Miss can pull off the win. But other than that, mid-major is not doing too well, and Tulsa is trying to change the thinking on that, getting a win over the Big East school. Second and 11. They are in the red zone. Let's see how that red zone efficiently, efficiency works. Douglas on the carry. 
He will be brought down by Abreu, Manny Abreu. Third and nine, and lined up in shotgun is Kenny. End zone, touchdown Tulsa. We are all tied up. Hooks up with Watts on the play. Trey Watts for his fourth touchdown of the year. And his first since they played Marshall four weeks ago. And the Golden Hurricanes are one Kevin Fitzpatrick extra point away from tying this one back up here in L.A. And it's good. We are all tied. And certainly the crowd, not a big factor here today. Of course, 90,000 seat stadium. Can't get it filled all the way. But not only a long travel for both these universities, also just, I wouldn't say down the road, but kind of around in the Bay Area there in San Francisco. The Craft Fight Hunger Bowl is going on right now between the Stanford Cardinal and the Notre Dame Fighting Irish, so I know a lot of Californians are at that game to cheer on their Cardinal. But we do have some of the diehards here from Tulsa and from New Jersey that made the travel. And also a couple of fans that are from the L.A. area that didn't want to travel all the way down to San Francisco. They want to just chill here at home and watch some good football. And they're being treated right now to a neck-and-neck -neck battle between a couple of really good football teams and I'm so glad we're able to add these couple of extra teams into the NIT because they're really proving that they want to be here. And this will probably, you know, be an experiment year, but from years on, it probably will stick as being indefinite. D DC Jefferson, the tight end from Winter Haven, Florida. DC here in LA catching the first down pass. Nova. is going to be good for six yards. You see Coach Blankenship. Nova was able to get that one out to Harrison. One of the seldom used receivers, Mark Harrison. Second and four. Incomplete pass. I like that name, Nova. That's a good name for a I guess any athlete, but we're so far. We see some good quarterback names. Munchie Legault, Robert Griffin III, and Gary Nova. That's a really good name. And Gary Nova just threw a Nova bomb towards the end zone. Touchdown Rutgers, and they take the lead back. And that was Mohamed Sanu. For the score and the Scarlet Knights come roaring back. Five plays, seventy four yards, and one touchdown. Two twenty-seven remaining in the first half, and we have our first flag of the game. Maybe there's like an Ed Hockey Lee, the the I know it's Ed Hockey Lee Jr., but there's no way Ed Hockey Lee Jr. can be three places at once. I'm surprised I'm at three places at once. But maybe there's an Ed Hockey Lee two, three, four, like the fourth, the third. I don't know. It's just, crazy. There's so many mysteries here in the Bowl Championship Series playoffs and in the National Invite Tournament. Second down and five ball at the 25 for Kenny. Hand off to Douglas. Douglas just got taken to school on that run. Didn't get too far. Third down and three. Let's see. Ken I want to see Kenny gun it down the field. 
The inaugural Christmas Bowl from L.A., the Coliseum. And picked off by Rutgers. They got an opening. It's going to collapse on them. He gets down near the 10-yard line. Intercepted by defensive back David Rowe, the senior from Coca, Florida. Interception number four on the year. Kenny pounding his fist into the turf. That's interception number 13 for him. And now Rutgers is in business. Gary Nova looking for touchdown number 13. And he's got it. One play. Touchdown Rutgers. Pass was nabbed by Mark Harrison. Touchdown, touchdown. Touchdown number three on the year for Harrison. So a slight error by G.J. Kenny forces his team to give up an extra seven points. So now it's up to the leader, the quarterback leader, to drive his team back down the field. It's now a two-score lead for the opposition. Let's see how the Golden Hurricane responds. Look at the ball at the 25-yard line. Kenny from the gun. Over the middle, wide open receiver. That's a heck of a start to the drive of trying to lead your team back. You'll get the ball at the 41-yard line. Well into Scarlet Knight territory. And you're well on your way to closing that gap. They give it to Douglas. Stop for a gain of zero. No, that was Trey Watts they gave it to that time. Over the middle, and it's intercepted again. G.J. Kenny not doing his, his team any favors right now. Yikes. So now if you're the Rutgers Scarlet Knights, you try to take advantage again of this bonus gift and go down, make it a 21-point game. Nova hit as he threw it, delivered the hit, and he just, he, it was one of those where he jumped up off the turf and asked, did he get it, did he get it? They had to tell him, sorry, he took the hit for nothing. <laughs> They didn't get it. And incomplete again. See Tulsa getting fired up. That was some, some pretty nice defense. Rutgers 3 for 5 on the third down conversions. Not too bad. Inside handoff the draw play to Jameson. Not didn't work. And Tulsa the Golden Hurricane will take a timeout. Hoping to come back and get some more points. And G.J. Kenny trying to shake him loose. Get over those interception woes that he's had. Uh, he's only had two multiple interception games all season long. He threw two interceptions two weeks ago against Houston. Other than that, his worst interception game was four interceptions thrown against Boise State. First and ten. So this will be his third multi-interception game of the year. Screen pass for two yards. Right now Kenny's just trying to keep it safe. Kenny. Lots of time. Almost intercepted again. That one was in and then out of the hand of Gashin. First down run for Watts. Trying to save that last time out. 
Kenny to the near side, completed out of bounds, will stop the clock. Well executed. Trey Watts brought it in, and the presence of mind by Watts, and maybe he was right there by the bench, so coach just yelled at him, get out of bounds. But it's just a well-executed play, and now they find themselves quickly down at the 34-yard line. They're going to go with no back, an empty set. Kenny launches it over the middle, and that's good for a catch to Johnson. Second down and five, pressured. Kenny throws it. Touchdown, Tulsa. The Golden Hurricane chopped the lead down to eight. Jordan James with the score, the senior from Little Rock, Arkansas, comes through with his second touchdown of the year for Tulsa. And they're right back in. There you see some of those diehard fans that made the long trip from Tulsa, Oklahoma to LA Coliseum. And not just a vacation, a week vacation or what have you for the student athletes, but for these fans who maybe have never traveled out of state before, some of these college kids. To be able to go on road trips because you have a month off. College ends. You know, college actually ended a couple days ago. You have a whole month off. What Instead of going, sitting at home, getting into drugs, drinking or whatever, go on a road trip with your friends and follow your team. These kids got to go on a road trip from Tulsa all the way to L.A. They're seeing L.A. maybe for the first time. They're seeing the Coliseum for the first time, a historic stadium. Hand off to, to the running back. He's going to get a few. And then if they win, hop back in your car. You travel back with the team. Maybe go home for a night or two. Get back in the car and you're going. You're traveling to Orlando. I mean, or what better way than to spend your Christmas break than to road trip with some of your friends at college. That's what it's all about. That's what the BCS playoffs are all about. Nova's going to attempt to throw it. And he's going to go down, and that will take us to the end of the first half. Quarterback sack by Scott Valentone. So that will do it. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take it up to the ESPN Hughes Studios. we got a nail bite on our hands. Would you have it any other way in the NIT? It's Rutgers 21, Tulsa 14. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Los Angeles, the LA Memorial Coliseum. It's just a seven point game between number four Tulsa and number five Rutgers in the National Invite Tournament here on ESPNU. It's the inaugural Christmas Bowl from LA and the Coliseum. Game tracks. Game got started. First it was Tulsa that scored, then Rutgers answered back, then Rutgers answered back again and again. And then Tulsa closed the gap with that touchdown just before the half. And here's where we sit. It's 14-21. to Rutgers football. They hope to extend the lead back to 14 on this drive. But for the Golden Hurricane, if they have anything to say about it, they're going to stop them right here on defense. Let's see who wins out. Right now it's Rutgers on that pass completion. Nova able to get that one out to his wide receiver, Tim Wright. The senior wide out for a brand new set of downs. First and ten. Another first down for Rutgers. That time it was Sanu. I'll have to look that name up, make sure I'm getting the the pronunciation right, Mohamed Sanu, S-N-A-U, Sanu, Mohamed Sanu. Quickly, we are into Golden Hurricane territory. It's time they decide to keep it on the ground, and Jameson's going to get tackled for a loss of no yards. Running game has been well defended on both sides so far in this game. We've seen a couple of running backs that have broken things wide open. Trent Richardson earlier today with 200 rushing yards. Uh, intercepted. First turnover of the game for Rutgers. 
And Tulsa has some life. Picked off by Milton Howell. Senior defensive back from New Orleans. Interception number four, number five on the year for him. He had three interceptions in one game against SMU. But yeah, I mean, we've seen running backs open it up here in the BCS playoffs. But in this game right now, non-existent. And they're going to go wild hurricane right now. The handoff. The opening. He had an opening to really go far. Didn't happen. So second and three, and they're going to stay with the Wildcat. That's not Kenny taking snaps. They're going to... Oh, they're actually going to throw it. Kind of a trick play. Incomplete. Who is throwing that? Number 22. That is Trey Watts. So they, they kept Watts in there on the Wild Hurricane. Faked it and threw it. I'd say maybe a little bit of a safe call. I kind of like it. Wild Hurricane again, and Watts takes it on the other side. First down for Tulsa. And they keep Watts in at quarterback. I think that's GJ, number... GJ Kenny, number four, is lined up at quarterback. He's the one in motion. They faked it to the quarterback. Kenny throws a block. Watts runs it. The playbook being emptied on this drive. Second down and eight. Kenny, right down, right above where it says Tulsa, bottom of your screen. They're going to let Watts throw it. Incomplete. He's actually looking for Kenny on the play. He threw it towards G.J. Kenny. The playbook has been zipped, or has been opened. They've, they've ripped, pulled down the little silver things on the side and emptied it little silver bearings on the side you go creative and then they get they go back to being conservative did kind of a screenplay there and it didn't work so fourth and 18 and Tulsa cannot take advantage of the Rutgers turnover it's still anybody's ball game at this point and it will oh my goodness ah uh, the ball just dies on the one yard line and Rutgers is in bad territory can they get out of the end zone? They will on that play. Six yard run for Jamison. Second down and four. Nova to the far side. Batted around and fell incomplete. So third and four. And if Tulsa can hold because of that great punt or I should say a lucky punt stopping on the goal line, they'd get the ball back around the 50, so that'd be a field position win, if anything else. Well, it's not going to happen. They're going to have to get him three more times. As Nova's able to get it out. He was able to get it out there to Samu. Or Sanu. I apologize. I'll have to look that up, how to say that name. Wild Knights from Jameson. Went for a loss in two. Second and 12. Nova back in the game at quarterback. Over the middle. Finds an open man, but he will get nothing more. Tim Wright. The catch, and then boom. Immediately Wright was hit in the back and went down by Ardnick. The senior from Dallas, Texas, senior linebacker. One of the top linebackers, actually. He gets about 20 tackles a game looking at his numbers. Third down and three. Nova throws it. Nova gets it to his receiver. That's going to be a first down to Jefferson. D.C. Jefferson, the tight end. And the Rutgers Scarlet Knights are dead set in the middle of a 99-yard drive. Let's see if they can complete it. So the ball at the 40-yard line, their own 40. Handed off to Jamison. Jamison has an opening. And now we're into Golden Hurricane territory with that first down past the 50. Really nice run. That was a lot of that was done by Jamison. I like to try to credit the offensive line blocking. And while they did have a few nice blocks in there, the rest was just him simply on the ground. 
here at the inaugural Christmas Bowl, and it's been a good one. Nova wide open, man caught at the 20-yard line. Number 81, Mark Harrison, and he simply burned Milton Howell, the DB, on that play. And Milton Howell's a senior out there getting burned by a junior wide receiver. We're in the red zone. Two for two for touchdowns has been the story for this team. Can they make it three for three? Oh, if he would have brought that in, that certainly would have been three for three. Instead, it'll fall to the grass here. And that makes it second down and ten. Slowly inching close, that's Sanu. First and goal. Jameson has it. Gets to the five. Second down and goal. Looking like they might try to throw it here. They are. Nova. Looking, looking, looking. End zone. Knocked away. Just batted away by Crabtree. Samuel Crabtree. Or no, Dexter McCoyle. Crabtree's the wideout. McCoy's the defensive back. So third down. Again, looking for the score, going for the fade route, incomplete. And they cannot complete the 99-yard drive. So they will have to settle for a field goal. Rutgers would have liked to have gotten the touchdown, but I'm sure they are excited with the fact that they are at the 1, and they are still able to drive and get points on the board. Fourteen plays, ninety-four yards, eight of almost three minutes by Sam Santee. That's a great name. The senior kicker, Sam Santee. A great name for a kicker, last name being T. Knowing that you kick from a T. Bad jokes. Bad jokes. I'll stop. Twenty-one seconds to go in the third. Tulsa football and. Find themselves trailing by a double possession once again. More plays like that. And they'll find themselves caught up in no time. They're doing a lot of this wild hurricane formation. It's, it's been working so far. They were certainly creative on the last drive. Now they're going to go back to some normal everyday football. And Hey, that works too for Tulsa. It's in there for a first down there at the 50. One more play, it looks like they will get off here before we head to the end of the third quarter. Kenny incomplete, and if that was a little higher, it might have been intercepted, but instead it went incomplete as Jones wasn't quite able to get it. And we actually have time for one more play. There's one second left. They're going to hand it off, and... First down run by Watts. Check that. That was not Watts. That was Douglas. Jatrain, T Jatrain Douglas. Sophomore. And, well, here at the Coliseum. The inaugural Christmas Bowl. We're at the end of the third. It's still a 10-point game. And this game has been relatively close throughout. If... Ohio versus Missouri and Georgia versus Toledo is any indication of how this game's going to go. We're going down to the wire. Do not go away at the NIT Christmas Bowl from Los Angeles. We're on the U. ESPNU. GJ is going to run it. Four yards on the carry. 
Second and six. Trying to bring everybody back on the no huddle. Up tempo. Style of offense for the Hurricane. Incomplete, and that was just a bad throw for GJ. Third and five, major play. Oh, touchdown, Tulsa. It's a four point game. Ricky Johnson with the reception. The junior from Lafayette, Louisiana. Johnson, who attributes for about one or two catches of the game. That was his first, and it goes for his first touchdown of the year, so he's right on pace of what he usually does every game. Tulsa closes the gap to three points. This is where it's at. This is where you got to be at ESPNU. Once again, the NIT coming down to the wire. I think with the excitement, the energy, and the passion that these teams have put in to these national invite tournament games, I have a feeling this tournament will be here to stay. There's a lot of question. Do you want to have a, a whole tournament? Do you want to just do seven bowl games? But I think that the feeling these student athletes have knowing that they get to continue and go to a new destination, enjoy another week of vacation for a win, that's fueling the passion here for these Warriors on the field. And I think we it'll probably stay an 18 tournament for the foreseeable future because this has been phenomenal. These 8 and 4 teams, they, they're putting on a show. They're not getting a chance at the big dance, but, but they... they uh, They 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 want to win some they want to win some trophies some rings before a lot of these guys for their college season ends after that false start call is going to back Rutgers up and that's not what they need right now they need to try to add on to that lead pass will be brought in by D C Jefferson tight end. That's a fun name, too. D.C. Jefferson. Nova on third and eight. A lot of fun names in this game. Intercepted! Intercepted by Tulsa! That's a big game-changer play. Picked off by Marco Nelson, the DB, the sophomore from Glenpool, Oklahoma. First interception of the year for Marco Nelson. Maybe you see some of those diehard fans, the, the ones that, that took the road trip with their friends from the university. They want to head back in and take the road trip to Orlando after this one. Tulsa is just seven points away from making that dream become a reality, but not if G.J. Kenny is going to throw passes into double coverage. Four minutes to go. It'll be a second down and ten. They're going to option it. Lots of coverage there. Juking around the defender was Watts. Not a bad little move there. Third down and six for Tulsa. This game's getting exciting right now. All the NIT games have been so exciting like this. They're going to get stopped at the 22-yard line, but they are moving. First and 10. 3.30 to go. They get the call from Coach Blankenship. Play action fake. Kenny takes it himself, and they're inside the red zone. At the 18-yard line, the red zone they want to get to is that big red end zone. 18 yards away. That's the red zone they're really looking for. Second and six. Kenny, option. Can't get the pitch out. Third down and five. They don't want to have to settle for the field goal. They want the lead. Three minutes to go. Kenny takes the call again. He takes the snap. Hand off to Watts. 
First down. Yes, they give it to him. First down for the Golden Hurricane. And that will keep the clock moving. Down at the 10-yard line. Fakes it to Watts. Kenny will take it. Inside the 5. G.J. Kenny. The fans are on their feet. Here in the Coliseum. The inaugural Christmas Bowl. And if they're all like this, there's going to be many more Christmas Bowls to come. They're going wild hurricane. Watts takes the snap. There's the handoff. There's the touchdown for Tulsa by Douglas. And the Golden Hurricane have reclaimed the lead. They had it in the first quarter. They lost it. And they have come all the way back to reclaim it. And now to make it a touchdown game, Kevin Fitzpatrick puts it through, and it's a four-point game. What a drive. What a way for Tulsa to take advantage of the interception. It's up to the defense now. Four-point game. You got to hold Rutgers. Wow, what a Christmas bowl this has been. This is like Christmas. Christmas before Christmas with this game here on ESPNU. Coming down right to the wire, just like every NIT game has up to this point. How exciting has this little mini tournament been? Jameson with the run. He's, he's been stopped a couple of times, but he's also rattled off a few really nice runs here or there throughout this ball game. Second and two. Nova will throw it on a second and short. Nova will screen pass it incomplete. Well, not so much a screen pass, I suppose. More of a, just a little in-out route. 50% on the third down conversions, looking for more. Make that uh, about 55% now. Is there going to be six for 11? They convert the third down. We're at two-minute drill time for Rutgers. You want to score, but you don't want to score too quickly. Touchdown, Rutgers. they reclaim the lead. Harrison, but as I said, you don't want to score too quickly, and now you give an opportunity to Kenny. Mark Harrison. I'm sure uh, Coach Greg likes that, but I'm sure in the back of his mind he... He would have liked his team to run the two-minute drill a little more effectively to try to run some time off the clock, but I'm sure, hey, get the points while, while they're hot. Take them, reclaim the lead, and now you put the pressure back on G.J. Kenny and this Tulsa team. But for Kenny and the Golden Hurricane, really, you got two minutes, you got three timeouts, that's plenty of time to go down and score, at least if you can, get into field goal range. That'll be a plus for them. You don't, the, I mean, the, the positive thing for Tulsa is they don't have to drive down and get the touchdown. I know that's what they want. They want to avoid overtime. But for them, they can at least drive down and and uh, they, have, they have two options of, of getting to the next level in this game. Nice start as GJ will go over the middle. Five-yard pickup. Down to about a minute 30. Still have all three timeouts. That will stop the clock while they move the chains. First down. Ball at the 41-yard line. Kenny out of the gun. Kenny is pressured from the outside. Has an open man across midfield for the first down. Chains will move. Clock will stop again. Man, oh man, what a game. Both of these teams, the passion, the energy. Down to a minute 10. Kenny pressured. Hits his receiver. Cole was the one that got that, and they decided to call a timeout with a minute to go. Might as well use them. You can't save them. Second and eight. Out of the gun. First down. No, just short. That was Ro that was a uh, Roberson, Thomas Roberson. 
First down, Tulsa and more. Jordan James with the reception. Less than a minute to go. Tulsa is driving. Spikes the ball. Man, oh man, the NIT is getting it done again. What a ball game. What a ball game this is. 47 seconds to go. Kenny pressured incomplete. He threw that one right at the face of a Scarlet Knight defender. And if he had the wherewithal to know that was coming, he throws his hands up. That's an interception. That's game over. 14 third downs. They've converted on nine of them. That's pretty clutch. Can they convert on this one? No, they cannot. They will have to settle for a field goal. And now it falls into the lap of Kevin Fitzpatrick. Credit Jones, Brandon Jones on Rutgers with that deflection. Fitzpatrick will put it through from 40 yards out. And we are all tied up. Unbelievable. That's all that we can say right now. I think I said that quite a few times, but man, oh man, the NIT getting it done again. Still, three timeouts, 30 seconds for Rutgers to get in a field goal range and try to get the lead. Nova. Comes the pressure. Nova throws it deep. Knocked away. And if that was completed, that possibly would have been a game-winning catch. So that would have put them right in field goal range. and It was batted away by number 28. Mar uh, no, that couldn't have been Gil No, 26, pardon me. Uh, Dexter McCoyle. Second down and 10. 25 seconds to go. Nova going deep again. And he's got to be careful not to get it intercepted. That was 28. That can't be. 28's both uh, Gilbert and Way. Rose, 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 Rose. Oh, Lowell Rose from L.A. actually. This is his hometown. Must have a different reason for wearing 28 today. Rutgers over the middle. First down. That might have just won them the game. They use a timeout. 12 seconds to go. Nova's going to throw it though. Oh, man, I think Rutgers just won this football game. Here comes the field goal. Kick is up. Kick is good. They win the game. Here comes the dog pile. They're storming the field back and forth, back and forth. And three out of four NIT games have been decided between three points. Three points has decided three NIT games. Unbelievable play of the game, of course. You gotta go with the throw from Nova to Harrison. Touchdown, but man, oh man, Tulsa fans. And, I mean, that's it. Their vacation's over. Bid farewell. A great effort from the Golden Hurricane. And we send home another mid-major. This is not the year to be a mid-major. Ohio. The lone survivor so far. Is, we've already gotten word over on ESPN2 that Baylor has hammered 51 points on Southern Miss. So one mid-major survives in Ohio. But what a game. I think we talked about it earlier, how you can go ahead and and wrap up what game was it, the, uh, the Cincinnati-Arkansas game, send it to ESPN Classic, I, 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 I'm not a loss for it, I think you can wrap this one up clearly and send it to ESPN Classic as well, it was that good, what an inaugural Christmas Bowl, the Bowl Committee definitely got a good one here.
Lots of fans came out from New Jersey and Tulsa. You can't possibly fill out a 90,000 seat stadium. I think the committee knew that going into it. But the turnout they had, the great game they had, they put on a great week of festivities for these student athletes. And now for Rutgers, the traveling continues because Georgia Tech will await them. They will spend the night here. Tomorrow, they will head back into the plane. They will fly immediately from Los Angeles all the way to Orlando. If they can pick up the win there, then they'll be heading to Hawaii for two weeks. That's a whole lot of travel, but I think it's worth it for this Rutgers team to be able to see Los Angeles, Orlando, and possibly Hawaii all within a one-month period. That's a pretty cool thing for these student-athletes, and uh, I venture to guess they're willing to, to deal with the travel just to be able to do this for one month out of their entire life. People can complain about the travel, the bowl sites, the neutral sites, all they want, but I think that's pretty cool. G.J. Kenny had a pretty wonderful day, nearly 300 yards passing, had the two interceptions, three touchdowns. What a game. It's a shame anyone had to lose this game because it was so good. Uh, Nova, just about the same, had about 100 more, though, 382 yards. For rushing, uh, Jameson, 51 yards, got a touchdown in there. Watts, 56 yards, no touchdowns. For the receiving, Watts got it for 36 yards. Jordan James, 81. Uh, Sanu, and I will promise you I'll look that name up and make sure I have it right. For the next, for the uh, for the Cure Bowl, when these two go at it, uh, Harrison is the other receiving leader on defense. Ten tackles here for Logan Ryan. And on the other side of things, you had Nelson with the one with interception. A couple more down the line. That's your leading defensive guy. Some comparative stats is we're starting to run low in time here on the U. 436 to 389 on total offense for the Scarlet Knights. Uh, passing yards, they got 100 more yards. Third down conversions, very impressed on both sides of the ball. You want to know why this game was so exciting and so close? The teams were able to convert on third down conversions more than half the time. That's, that's something that's pretty awesome. And that'll definitely keep a game going when, when two offenses can do that. 100% in the red zone. I mean, shoot. If only Tulsa had two more tries in the in the red zone, a lot more points. Turnovers, same on both sides. Kick return yards, total yards, almost about even. That'll do it here. Hope you guys enjoyed the inaugural Christmas Bowl. This is going to be it for the first round of the BCS playoffs. Hopefully you've had a chance to go watch all the games. If not, hopefully you've been able to at least see your favorite team win or lose. And we hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, that's all we can say for right now. We'll see you next week. Rutgers, Georgia Tech. Well, instead of hearing me talk about it, why don't we just show you the brackets? I figured that'd be the easier thing to do. Good night, everyone from Los Angeles. Well, here you are. We have the Final Four decided, not the Final Four most fans are looking at in the BCS playoffs, but the first Final Four will come, compliments of the NIT, Georgia Tech, Rutgers, Ohio, and Virginia, and just look at those scores. Three games decided by three points in the NIT, as they're looking ahead to Hawaii, but first we have round number two to deal with, the inaugural Cure Bowl, Georgia Tech versus Rutgers, Big East. Versus ACC, that should be a fun one, down in Orlando. Go ahead and get your tickets for that one if you're in the Orlando area. And uh, down in Texas, Ohio versus Virginia at Cotton Bowl, the Ticket City Bowl. So if you're in the Dallas area, go ahead and grab your tickets and uh, head on out to the Ticket City Bowl.